I want Lucy Lou in a wet t-shirt uh, getting out of a pool, baby. That's what I need in Barbie. I, I, I need it. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. Everybody needs it. That's just universal. Uh, yeah, um, we can get um, Captain America in there if he gets in shape and wants to be in a Barbie movie. We can get uh, the fucking... I mean, you could even get um, Vin Diesel in there. You know what I mean? Yeah, whatever. You get Paul Walker's ghost in there. <laughs> So in like the Barbie movie, like you know, uh, Margaret Robbie is uh, got like depression issues because she's a little Barbie bitch. So she consumes like you know different types of regular sort of hemp or weed, you know, different crossbreeds. And um, uh, then one night she consumes White Widow because she was good for pain, even though it's you know one of the types that causes anxiety in some people. So then she's really afraid. But in like a dumb Barbie way that's like a little concern to Ryan Gosling. Because there's like somebody supposedly dead down the street. And then they go down there and there's two crash test dummies in a vehicle like chatting it up with like uh, the EMT Barbies that are like standing there from the Barbie EMT set at the hospital. And they just crashed into a light pole because they're crash test dummies, you know. And uh, I was thinking it'd be fun to have them in the movie for a bit of comedic relief. Like they're always in the background of her and them doing stuff, you know, walking past their house because they always drive out. And they're all, they have replaceable, like, windows and doors. This would be a good kid's play set, too. And windows, so they, like, blow out into, like, pieces of plastic, you know, and then a new frame is instantly put in by, like, one of the crash test dummies. So you have, like, eight stuntmen living in, like, a two-story house that, like, smash through all the windows and have, like, the sides blow out all cheesy and then get replaced. Like, I think it'd be really funny. Yeah, so in the Barbie movie, just as a little afterthought of additional ideas, because, you know, the Barbie lifestyle kind of goes along with tanning and stuff. You know, red light therapy, which helps heal the skin and different things, would be what they would do to cure their plastic and repink, they would say, you know? So then, like, for, you know, Idris Elba, because he's got a darker complexion, he, he got repurple, you know? Yeah. And that's the, the beds that they do, you know, they get into them. So you can actually see red light and purple light therapy in the movie and the beds that are, you know, portable and stuff. Like, they have them in their house, you know, because there's portable ones now we showed off on our live stream. Well, apparently the California tan sun lamps, it's California tan is the name of the place, and that's what the sun bulbs say. They're going into other places, and they're like, I guess they're the distributor, so... People really prefer them because the purple really makes their dickheads glossy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I mean, you could say that if you want to make the film rated R. It's a fine rated R film. doesn't yeah. need to exactly be rated anything else. Uh, that's about it. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So, right, they, like, go from the desert area place that, like you were saying, Grant through like you know the reddish like canyon area where like there's sort of the transition into the feeling of old west you know vellum native american stuff so then there's the traditional powwow you know real traditional native american barbies get doing their thing and they offer them the peace pipe as you know it gets in the evening and there's the ridiculous sunset and then you know the eagle swooping in the distance and then they get all, all um, trippy from the peace pipe, and then they like go on a vision quest as all the Native, Native Americans are dancing around the fire, you know, forever. And then, um, you know, they go into this whole landscape in their heads as they lean back, you know, together. And then they're like prancing around, you know, like in horses on clouds, like, you know, like hurting you know like riders on the storm but like it's all just like billowy and you know golden clouds that they're like riding cattle around on you know and stuff and then like changes into a thunderstorm and then it's like oh no and all the cattle are stampeding around and then they're all like twitching around all silly and it comes out of their back out of their head supposedly and then it like shows jennifer connelly you know the uh the hot Native American woman, you know, go off. With the, her giant headdress on, with yeah. With her headdress on, yeah. That covers her titties, you know. Yes, as she drops her vellum clothes <laughs> to uh, 
engage in the sweaty Barbie horsecock uh, 9000 uh, orange firelight this secret hidden playset. Yeah. That's so good, yeah. <laughs> Camera follows her. <laughs> That's just great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, now what we need is the world's best Elvis impersonator as um like a Barbie character and then like his like you know girlfriend Barbie you know that's what we need as well in the Barbie universe then Margaret Robbie you know in a scene because you know cities are all dirty and stuff and the whole point of this movie is to point out you should have had everything you know as much greenery as possible and to make you know the pink stand out more you know so then she says, uh, but of course all of that comes from the dirt, which is brown. So then she says, you need a little brown sometimes to stay for your pink to stand out. Then she looks like over like at Idris Elba, like all like big eyed. Then he just glares at her, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then he just says, I'm purple. And on the Western playset, Jeff Bridges and Kurt Russell in white hat and black hat gun each other down every noon for no reason, you know what I mean? But not really, because they're just pretending to, because they're Barbies. Yes, and Margaret Robbie, like, the ongoing joke is at some other point when she's stoner Barbie, which I have a picture for, of a whole video working through each, you know, Barbie and what likely scenes would be for them. Anyways, uh, when she... She's in stoner Barbie mode, and then she's like, oh my god, Ryan Gosling. And then he's like, I, I told you, I look nothing like him. You, if you keep watching that stupid you know, soap opera, it's going to rot your brain. Then it, they look at the TV you know, that's on, and it's like much more aged, infinitely lined Ryan Gosling on makeup down. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, it's a show where there's like Selma like, looking at him, and she's like, you know, way overly dramatic looking into the light as it like burns her eyeballs and starts crying and then screaming in Mexican wildly at him as he responds with like, gay. You know, with like, like really seriously, yeah. like, oh, got it. You know, just like a few words. Yeah. <laughs> Then they show up at um, where the Barbie playset is, where uh, Ryan Gosling is, and they meet Ryan Gosling, and they realize that he does look exactly like Ryan Gosling as a joke, because, you know, they're putting aging on him because they're all Barbies, because he's supposed to look real, you know what I mean? He's supposed to look extra real because he's a Barbie. And then uh, Antonio Banderas and Salma are there uh, arguing with each other infinitely in an endless drama spree. Like, like infinite, like as if it just keeps going, like, you know, and then he gave me a banana, but he forgot about the water that I, I needed, so then I had to go get it myself, and I was going to be upset, but then Antonio said that he was happy about the way that my hair looked, then I was back to being happy again, so then we had sex. Then everybody stares at them and says, what the fuck? So they're they're at the graveyard, you know, late at night because their car breaks down in the little Barbie playset, even though it's like it's, it's just tiny, you know what I mean? And then there's the ghost of Paul Walker because why not, you know? Played by his brother again, you know, he comes up out of the gravestone, you know, and he's all like, "Ow, ow!" <laughs> and they run screaming away. Yeah.